So can I go ahead with the first one? Absolutely. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, so when when we hold our breath, I I, I believe the, the carbon dioxide production is still going on in our body due to the respiration processes system. Yeah. But does the buildup of carbon dioxide internally in our body system upset the body organs and the glands? And could this be a negative effect? I can answer that in one sentence or I can elaborate it. It does not have a negative impact. Because when you go into a meditation or a samadhi, you are actually not even breathing, but you get to enlightenment. So obviously it does not have a negative impact to your organs, either mentally or physically. In the scientific approach or the medical aspect of it, remember you do not actually, when you exhale it, you are not only exhaling CO2, there is also an oxygen along with it. And uh, you do not also fully exhale what retention of the holding the breath inside gives you ability to consume the oxygen and have a deeper and fuller exhalation. So when you inhale, there will also be a fuller and then stimulate your circulatory system to uplift your mood. Inner breath retention actually can uplift your mood. The best thing you can do for a depression, lack of motivation. If you are lethargic, do not feel that uh, your system that is stimulated. Start holding the breath inside. But do it not in either randomly but do it consciously in a rhythmic breathing pattern that we teach. I think you have practiced plenty of the practices of breathing exercises in the Pranakriya Yoga as well as in the Pranayam Pranavidya we teach. In the Pranavidya practice, we also have lots of uh, Pranayama practices. So, all those practices are there to uplift your energy, uplift your mood, also the uplift your spirit. So, i give you simplest example. If you do the systematic or your inner breath retention is a part of a practice, is beneficial to you. But if you are holding the breath randomly without the practice, that is having different consequences. But also I give you an example of when you are stressed. Whenever you are stressed, psychologically what your body does, is stop breathing, you hold naturally. Then when you are holding the breath naturally, is the body's way to survival instinct to stimulate your endocrine system not to feel low and go into the uh, moved by the holding the certain tense that is taking place at the time that is your body defense mechanism. But pranayama practices actually can stimulate that way as well. Pranayama or the pranamidya practices we teach, pranakriya yoga, same aspect of it. But Holding the inner breath, the breath inside Antara Kumbhaka is actually the pranayam. Pranayam is not possible without holding the breath inside. So the you do not need to worry. Your lungs still have plenty of oxygen while you're holding the breath inside. You don't consume entire oxygen when you have taken it. Also remember, you take more gases than oxygen in the time of inhalation. And the, this is also a subject of intention during pranayama practice, your mindset is slightly different. 
if your mindset is I'm holding the breath inside and fighting with it, it can be very dangerous. Mm. But remember, if we become a subject of pranayama, pranayama is energy. You're creating the extension for your mental capacity and the willpower as well as you're uh, stimulating your endocrine system. If you make it to the consumption or conservation of prana inside the body, at that time it is not negative. So pranayama or pranayama practice, kumbhakas, what we do in yoga, they are done with certain bandhas. They are done with certain intention holding energy in certain places to keeping the lock in the body. So it's not dangerous. So if you don't do the bandhas and you hold the breath inside, either you do the manas bandha or you do the istula bandha, means the physical energetic lock or mental energetic lock, it is not dangerous. If you're just holding the breath inside, yeah, it can be dangerous. It depends how actually you're holding the breath inside. Is that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Brilliantly. Thank you. And I give you an example uh, of it. The, if somebody suffers from a low, feeling low all the time, I give you an example, you get them in the, nowadays, uh, if you have seen in the hospitals, they give you a paper to breathe in and out, same, pay, same air, to yeah. uplift your spirit. It is actually pranayama practice. We do that in Kriya. We use our head and we breathe into the palm, same practice, to uplift, to stimulate the brain sensation inside the body. But you do it for rhythmic sound, a certain period of the time, and the ratio of the breath is slightly different as well. But a general practice, if you are feeling low, energy, motivation, depression, I'm not taking the responsibility. If somebody has any breath conditions, I wouldn't be giving an example now anyway. Sorry. People will be watching that on YouTube. But uh, if it was in the practice, there's a, some of the practices you can do because the respiratory system is quite... Uh, Sensitive matter. But uh, if you do like to practice, there's many careers and the many pranayama practices we cover across the pranavidya training or the programs, also the pranakriya program, which you have been participating in. Yeah. So it's good that you ask the question, but uh, there is no concern. There is no problem with that. As the only intention of holding the breath inside defines it. Are you holding to fight with the body or your pran anusundhan? Pran anusundhan means uh, you are creating the prana conservation or your intention to feel the energy and the vibration inside the body rather than make it physical. So you change your relationship mental relationship as well as in the energetic relationship, you will have no problem with that. Right. Thank you. And next question, my friend. Okay, the second question, uh, if I may, is uh, we're often asked to inhale when we've applied chin law. Uh -huh. Surely, is, is this not count, counterproductive? Should we inhale and then apply chin lock? Or, or am I... Uh, again, is the... Sometimes the half knowledge can be very dangerous. <laughs> so, there's many practices, uh, Rajbhai. Yeah. There are many practices. The... If you talk about in the Prana Kriya Yoga, there is many Kriyas. I do ask to inhale as you with a Jandra Bandha. But that is to stimulate certain part of your spine. Right. It is not, uh, again, I said Prana Sundar, where I'm holding your mental attention. 
and which area of the body feel the presence of your mind, it makes a difference. So when you're practicing chill off, holding the breath, uh, the chin to throat, breathing to nose to, even you can inhale normally and look to pop your nose, inhale, completely different experience. Your breath intense and changes. When you have chill off, when you inhale it, first of all, lots of people cannot practice a ujjayi breath. But it's to the throat, but it stimulates the thyroid gland. Yeah. One benefit. Second benefit is clarity of your frontal lobe of the brain. Affect the cervical part of the spine area. There's many benefits to it. It's just a matter of when you are doing it. Again, is a subject to the mental intention and the part of the practice. What else are you doing with it? If you are doing a bandha and doing a kumbhaka, it's a different story. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you're asking me the... I have not asked you to inhale through your nostrils, the chill lock and hold the breath inside. It's been always in a part of the flow. Yeah. 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 And okay. this bandha has been done, it's been done with certain different mudra. Yes. Certain. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. don't mix two practices. Pranakriya mm -hmm. is completely different practice to a pranamidya practice that we have done. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So it's not a counterproductive. No, no. It is a part of the practice. Yes. And do you notice yourself in a difference? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. I mean, uh, I, I, I feel more energetic after Pran Kriya. Definitely, definitely more energetic and lively. And, okay. and, and also not no, only the part of the body. Don't, but... uh, any negative impact on your body by holding the breath inside. Do you notice any yeah. negative impact on yourself by holding what? the breath inside? No, 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 none at all. This was just, uh, just, just trying to understand. I'm only asking the question. <laughs> Do you notice any difficulties? Do you notice the difference breathing while you are keeping the Jalandar Bandha Oh, no, 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 no. It's a very good practice to do with Jalandar Bandha if you have a minor heart condition because oh. it makes the Ujjayi breath. It's also the people who does not have a good control over the diaphragm. Along with it, also the Poor thyroid right. activation is very good for your thyroid and parathyroid gland practicing uh, Jandra Bandha and breathing practice. But depend how or what practice you're doing. Obviously, you can't do alternative motion breathing or the other practices there, but it's a different parts of it. Again, to the creating the prana sanchara means the directing the prana to the particular area of the body in different practices is also part of the pranayam, part of the pranavidya, as well as the pranakriya yoga. So a different practice, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pranam. How do you find it while you're practicing the pranayam with a uh, chill off with the Jalandar Bandha? I, I, I think I think I I, uh, I enjoy it more, and I tend to concentrate more uh, when I, when I do that with with Jalendra Bandha, you know. And uh, yeah, but in pra and overall in Pran Kriya, it's I just concentrate more on pranayams than on if you're doing pranayam as part of a, a class practice. Okay. I have a very good dear friend 